<laughs> What's happening? So we are headed for our nightly show to check on the animals. All the tours are complete, um, but we like to go check everybody out. And you all haven't got to actually truly play with the girl goats in a minute. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, so we're gonna go in there and sit in with them and see what kind of fun antics they'll do. <laughs> we never forget about you all though. Oh goodness. The fellas. Oh, okay. That's your auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle baby. No. What's up, Suave? Hi, Buster. First stop, we gotta put these guys up for a few minutes so we can talk to you all and hopefully not have them barking at us the entire time. <laughs> They're just trying to say. <laughs> he does it every time. All right, let's go see our goats. Okay. Y'all lead the way. Okay. What's up, ladies? How we doing today? How we doing, Oh, everybody just decided to take a pee. <laughs> All just at this time, right now. Okay, Elsa. Yeah, and there's another one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you have bug bear. What? You have bug bear. I don't have bug spray. Okay, though. thank you. Then why are you wet? It's called sweat. Hi, Dolly. Oh, Hi, baby. Goodness. Yes. Your breath I is know. hot. I know. You love us very much. You just protect us. Your head is cut in half. <laughs> Dolly. Been down, Ray Ray. Can we get the shot? No. Do you mind? No. <laughs> He's still walking. So we're hanging out in their pen. Whoa! <laughs> Stampede. Stampede coming through. Um, we wanted to talk about ghosts just a little bit. Um, a lot of people have had a lot of questions about ghosts. It sounds like there's a lot of new Anna. 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 No, no, no. Stop it. She's trying to eat the camera. Anna. Okay, okay. I'm not sure if we're going to get through this without somebody tearing up something. Um, but Those are like dogs and kids. They really like it when you're on their level. Yeah. It's like playtime for real. <laughs> I hear deep breathing. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, if you're into getting goats, one of the biggest things that you need to understand is they are very selfish and stubborn. That is like the number one thing that you need to understand about goats. Uh, they're all about themselves. They want their food and they want it now. And they don't know boundaries. Okay. They do not. No. They're all over you. But they're also like the greatest animal to own. Yeah. Dolly, for real, girl. Um, goats, <laughs> goats really are pretty easy to take care of, to be honest with you. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it besides making, you, making sure you stay on the minerals, making sure you stay on any kind of dewormers, and also hoof clipping. Um, hoof clipping is very important, more in the winter times when it's very muddy yeah. um, and you don't have them on rock. Yeah. Uh, we, we do a lot of grazing here. Um, but they're a very important animal. We, I mean, we like their goat's milk more than any milk that we've ever had. For sure. I mean, yeah. Better than any kind of cow's milk. The biggest thing that we're stressing out now is how we're getting all of these girl goats to our new place. Yeah, so they have four boys, so we're yeah. gonna put them in our little horse trailer. And after be after okay. we drop off okay. the yes. okay. okay. And then the girls, there's 11, 10 or 11. Yeah. I don't know, and Dolly, um, she's gonna ride with them. So we gotta figure out how we're gonna get them two hours down the road. Right, a lot of Don't people- have a big enough trailer. A lot of people have offered up some trailers and stuff. Um, it sounds like it's gonna work out well for the chickens and for holiday stuff, but not so much for actual goats and dogs. Right. Um, so, I mean, worst case scenario, I take a couple trips with the small trailer. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of driving right. um, and a few days that come across that, but we're still trying to track down a bigger horse trailer uh, they can hold them all. Uh, the, our biggest issue is our, my truck isn't a gooseneck. Right. Uh, it doesn't have a gooseneck hitch. A gooseneck. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to try to find a pull behind a trailer that's big enough to hold them all. Uh, so we'll figure it out. Um, if anybody local knows anyone that has one, we're very much willing to rent it. Yeah. Um, but we just haven't had any contact. So we'll, we're going to keep searching. We still got a month to go. Thank you. <laughs> um, and we'll see what happens from there. But the ladies are definitely coming with yes, us because they they're our best friends. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. We, we love you. 
Oh. Come on, Elsa, lead the way. Lead the way, girl. Lead the way to my knockout. <laughs> these two, these two are like my, my guard dogs. Yeah. They stand right beside me. All the rest are over there. <laughs> so this fall, <laughs> Elsa's pushing me. Once we get them settled and we're settled, we are going to start the breeding. So Anna, Elsa, Butters, Lola. Hey. So hang on. In, in case you don't know the names, let me show you. Anna. Elsa. You're pushing me. Butters. Lola. And Penny. And the two behind are Callie and Angel. Nope, I mixed those two up. <laughs> that's Callie, that's Angel. That's Butters' baby, and that's Penny's baby right there. So hopefully, fingers crossed and God willing, we'll have five pregnant does all at the same time to our Nigerian dwarfs, Penny and Lola. So they'll be bred with Rico, our Nigerian dwarf. Excuse you, Anna. She literally just um, came out our And the rest will be bred with Charlie. So yeah, very, very exciting. We've never bred goats before. This will be a first. Yeah, so Charlie's a new pine. He's a Nubian alpine. Anna and Elsa are new pines. Um, so that'll be the same breed that comes out. You're about to get those horns hung on my monopod. <laughs> uh, Butters is a full-blooded Nubian. Um, so their offspring will be new pines yeah. because Charlie's a new pine. Uh, and then we'll have fully registered Nigerian dwarfs yeah. because Penny and Lola and Rico are all registered and they're all 100% full-blooded uh, Nigerian dwarfs. So super exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah, very exciting. Out. So babies in the spring. I know, and our brand new all barn. All kinds of babies. All kinds of babies. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, no, no other way to go into a brand new homestead and literally in what, five months yeah. doing babies on the yeah. homestead. <laughs> and goats are great for kids. You can see that Wyatt yeah. is all over Anna and she's nice and she's sweet. And she even has her horns. Um, we don't have any fear from her. Um, you start to get to know your goats. They all have their own personalities. Um, and you know who to handle and who not to. But for the most part, you can handle them all. And did the, the dog did the twin me out. Where is, is she wearing you out? You guys probably already know who Dolly is. I mean. This is Miss Shady. That's Penny, she hates us. Yeah. But we love her. <laughs> she is a blue-eyed Nigerian dwarf, and she's great, and she's a good mom. She ain't about people. No. We've had her for, what, seven months now, yeah. eight months? She doesn't want to do this. She gone. Come on. Come on. And then you probably already Dog know said, what, I got you. And then you probably already know what dogs do. Yep. <laughs> they, they, uh, uh, came home. <laughs> came home. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Y'all have a good night. Okay. We was hanging out with your ladies. We sure were, Charlie. And Rico. Okay, so we've shown you the goats, um, and now we wanted to take a minute to talk about the garden and talk about basically your learning center. So we started gardening about seven years ago, really when we got married. Uh, yeah. We had our first garden. Down, uh, down the hill at the trailer that we lived in. It was a tilled garden, much like the one that you'll see in a minute. Um, but that's how we started to learn. And we succeeded, we failed, succeeded, failed. It was kind of a balance because it's hard to start that way. We fed plenty of deer then. Yes, we did. <laughs> we didn't fence it. Yeah, we tried to, we tried to just do a scarecrow. Yeah. Like, that'll do it. And <laughs> what, what did we put up? We put up something. It wasn't the pop hands. We put up something that like collected water. Cans, I think. Yeah, it was. Aluminum cans. Yeah, aluminum yeah. cans. So they filled up they with would... water and then in yeah. the ground. <laughs> we thought they would bang together and they just filled up with water yeah, and just landed on the ground. <laughs> um, and then we moved up here and we got our first greenhouse, which you all saw with us. You came on that journey. That's kind of when we started YouTube. You got to see us build it. Um, oh, if you haven't gosh, seen that greenhouse. video, go back and watch it because cattle panel greenhouse is the way to go. It's cheapest. It's sturdy. Anyone can do it. You don't have to have any special materials yeah and it worked yeah it's it survived through tornadic weather yeah um and didn't even move a muscle yeah um so i'll post that at the end of the video if you want to watch us build that but that greenhouse was something special yeah um that really kick-started us from we're just dabbling in gardening to we're gardening right, to being able to seed start and not yeah. have to buy starts right or try to just yeah. force everything inside because 
even though it would work, you know, you would have some die off because you couldn't harden off correctly or whatever it is. Um, but that greenhouse was super important for our yeah, life. Very simple. Um, and one thing I'm going to take from this greenhouse to the new place is I don't think you need to drop $5,000 for a big hot tunnel. No. I think I can build that as a hot tunnel. And yeah. that's one of the things that I really want to test myself with is learning how to do that cattle panel greenhouse yeah. as a hot tunnel. Bigger and, and better. Bigger and better. Yep. <laughs> Like... So tilled garden is tilled ground is how we started gardening. Yeah. So obviously, even though we have raised beds now, we still like to do that and carry on the tradition because that's how we learned. Mm -hmm. And it's still successful. It works for us every year. We do zucchini, squash, and pumpkins. Pumpkins. And we love it. Um, yeah. That's one thing that we will never stop doing. And at the new place, again, bigger and better, till more ground, be able to grow corn, not in a raised bed. Um, potatoes, yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we have our silage tarp, so we're gonna make, I know I said it wrong, but I'm gonna continue to say it's silage. <laughs> um, we have huge plots that we can plant, um, and I'm addicted to planting corn now. Yeah. Um, so I definitely want some corn plots. I definitely want to like really grow an abundance of stuff that we truly eat often, like potatoes, corn, green beans, yeah. stuff like that. And that's sure. what our big tilled plots are gonna be used for. Yeah. Once we kind of mastered the tilled garden, we moved on to raised beds. Um, we started with four, which is our four big ones that you see with the cattle panels. Then we added three more very small ones. And then this year we added two really long ones and short ones in the back of our garden. Yeah. And that's, I think, been the biggest learning curve for us is, you know, having good soil and amending it and how you can start and not have to break the bank but then you get further into it and you want to spend more money and you want to have the good super soil and stuff like that yeah because when it boils down to it for any beginning gardener um there's three things that you need good sunlight decent water and good soil that's right um other than that just let it plant and let it grow and weed it every once in a while yeah um and that's I know going into our next place, that's the one thing that we will never cut cost on yeah. is the soil. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're going to amend our own and start making it better naturally. Yeah. Um, however, right out the get go, um, we'll probably test and learn to see how the soil is, but yeah. bringing in good soil, good compost, and really amending that into the uh, natural soil that's there goes such a far, long way. Yeah. You're immediately going to have a successful garden. And this raised bed, the raised bed gardening is the beautiful garden, right? Yeah. Um, so that's something that we are definitely going to bring on to the new place you as well. You get to shape it how you want to. Exactly. And plan it and design it, which is makes gardening more fun. Right? right, right. So some of our thoughts going into the new place is we're definitely going to do something very similar to what we've done here. Yeah. Um, it's designing how we want to put the raised beds is something that we're going to figure out. However, she's always had this idea of, what was it called? Uh, the pot garden? Pottager. Pottager garden so we never knew what that meant um, but she thought it meant very Eclectic unique pots and containers pots and that you're growing you know, stuff out of tubs or old sinks troughs. and troughs yeah, sinks, and like that. weird like Just antique eclectic. things that have a hole yeah. in it that you can put some soil Whatever in you it can find. right so uh i think that's going to be a huge addition to yeah. our raised garden area it's going to have a beautiful fence around it a beautiful entrance i can see a lot of roses a lot of zinnias yeah. stuff like that that's going to be the beautiful garden yes. um that we enjoy to spend our time in that still produces us food but not like the big plots yeah. that we're gonna have. And hopefully like a fountain slash koi pond exactly. in the middle with a sitting area and stuff like that. Right, pl our getaway place that we can go hang out. Yeah. Um, kind of like our pond here, you know, that's mm -hmm. a very important spot for us uh, to go hang out. So we're gonna create that within our garden this time. Yeah. So this year we expanded even more into the back area with perennials and stuff like that, uh, which we're gonna take some and we're gonna leave some, um, but gardening isn't always about producing food or you know the raised beds or getting what you can out of it it's also about having perennials stuff that serves you every single year that comes back that's beautiful and that you can call your own and it's very special it's extremely important and you have a lot of pride in those type of plants yeah um, when you're growing a pear tree or an apple tree or blueberry bush or raspberry bush or whatever it may be that you're growing um, you have a lot of pride in that piece, elderberry bushes. Yes. It's yours. It's, it's your baby. Right. And yeah. you know it's going to be with you for a very long amount of time, like a pet or an animal. It's um, not something you say goodbye to when the frost comes. Exactly. It's a see you later. You, see you soon. Exactly. You don't rip it out. You don't yeah. do any of that. Uh, so it's very 
near and dear to your yeah. heart. Um, so we are going to take the time and really plant an orchard yes. um, to where we can have all of those things and have lines of apple trees and lines of blueberry bushes um, and different stuff like that because we finally have the space to do so. Yeah. Um, so I think out of anything from our expanding our garden that I'm the most excited about is that orchard spot yeah. um, with trees and all the different bushes. A, a place that the kids can grow up with. Right. Um, there's actually trees in the entrance, they're walnut trees, and they were planted by family members of the very first farm that was ever there. And those are special. We look mm -hmm. at those and we know that that family put that work into that and they watched it grow and now our kids get to watch it grow. So to be able to do that ourselves and plant more of an orchard and more bushes and stuff that our kids can watch and then potentially someone else if we're, I mean, obviously we won't be there forever. Right. You know, we will pass on and the legacy will continue. So that's important to us. Yeah. Not only have you know, small garden that you grow and rip out, but you have things that will last and carry a legacy. A lifetime. Yeah. Um, and th that's why we're not taking everything with us. Yeah. We are gonna leave some here because we're very proud on the fact of leaving a legacy yeah. and leave, leaving the place better than we found it. Side note on the walnut trees. We do know that those yeah. are not great for a yeah. garden. Um, they're only on the driveway and will not impact our yeah. garden or our soil anyway. <laughs> the last thing in the garden that I'm for one proudful about um, is pallet trellises. Yeah. Um, it sounds so simple, like you put two pallets together and you grew cucumbers and melons over the top of it. Yeah, that's all I did. Um, but it's the creative mind yeah. uh, in the garden. And that's something that you always have to remember as a gardener is to get creative um, like pallet trellises. Um, when you're trying to cram some things into some small spaces. How can you make that work? We all know about cattle panels, of course, because our great friend Jess, yeah. uh, you know, blew the internet up with cattle panel trellises. Um, but there's so many other things that you can do with that as well, like pallets, uh, you know, putting two together, throwing a flower bed against it and letting it grow over that and be, being super successful. Um, so I think that's that's allowed me to open my mind a little bit more like at antique shops. Yeah. So when she's looking for her random pots to mm -hmm. put random plants in, I'll be looking at things can a cucumber grow on that? Right. You know, or a bean, can that grow yeah. on that? Um, because I want our garden to be very unique. Yes. Um, I don't want it to be, we're gonna have the farmer's garden. Yeah. That's gonna be there. Um, but for our fun, beautiful garden, what is that weird, unique stuff that yeah. we can share with you all that's a, a cost-saving cost DIY trick like the pallet trellis? Um, because I think that's one of the things that people know me by yeah. is, doing weird stuff with pallets. <laughs> so I want to continue that on at our new place. Yeah, for sure. So to make it all make sense and wrap it up, we have learned so much from this place, from our garden, from our greenhouse, from our soil, our land, um, growing everything. We've went from nothing to what we have now in a very short amount of time. And we crammed it all in and it was our classroom. I mean, this yeah. backyard garden was our classroom. You know, we learned how to grow, how to preserve, how to put up, and everything that you need to know if you're growing food. Right, and that's something that you always need to remember as a beginning gardener, you're, no matter where you are, where you are right now, you're in your classroom. Um, even when we move to the new place, we're gonna just move to a different classroom. We're just yeah. graduating to a new grade. Yes. Uh, that's all it is. So it's gonna test us. Um, we know there's gonna be overwhelming moments. Uh, we know when we expand, it's gonna be a lot for us to take on and we don't know exactly what to expect from that. Uh, but we know we're, we're up for the challenge and we're ready to learn. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest thing I can you know recommend to any of you all that are sitting out there either struggling or wanting to homestead or whatever it is, wherever you are right now, Continue to learn. Um, appreciate the classroom that you have, um, master it, and then move on to the next challenging item that you have uh, when the time is right. Yeah. Um, and our time is right. Is. We've officially graduated. We now it's time to move on to the next class. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, you got to see some little fun with the ladies. Um, they're, they're a trip, man. <laughs> if you want goats, <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're not gonna be disappointed. Some, I ain't gonna lie. 50% of the time, they're gonna drive you crazy. And make you mad. <laughs> yes, but the other 50% of the time, you're just gonna to wanna to go sit in their yeah. pan and just let them nibble on your ear yeah. and love all over them because they are that special to you. Yeah. They're, they're more like dogs than anything. Um, but then you get to see the garden, you get to see our learning experiences. Um, hopefully you're going through some of the same things. If you're not, start challenging yourself, uh, start learning, start pushing harder yeah. uh, to make sure that you're getting all the benefits from your classroom. Yeah, and make sure you're in our Snapchat. 
We have yeah. a Facebook group. Um, it'll be linked below. We'll try to push it towards the top or pin it. Um, but it is a great classroom to learn with. Um, beautiful people yeah. that do not shame you in any way. You can ask any question. It doesn't matter. And we um, promise even, you, if they do, they're gone. Yes. Because it's a 100% it <laughs> zero tolerance group. But it has never happened. Yeah, it hasn't. Um, you can learn from experienced gardeners, beginner gardeners. You can learn everything you need to know. So mm -hmm. coming up this winter, that's the place you want to be. Get yeah. in the Stop Tribe and prepare yourself for next year or your next class or you know your next journey in life yeah because that's where we post all of our pictures and yeah. we're going to be posting a bunch yeah. of all the new things that we're doing because we're brand new gardeners now like we have to start yeah. from scratch <laughs> uh so if you're brand new let's join that staff tribe and let's get the, yeah. the conversations going because the winter is the time for work that's right the summer is the time to harvest yeah all right we uh, love y'all don't forget to subscribe Sorry. first. I mean, how are we going? Not, how are they not going to subscribe and not learn how to do the garden? <laughs> no, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Yeah, and we love y'all. Until the next one. Bye. Bye.